that kind of dynamism. And space is big. There's room for a bunch of winners, and it's going to happen at all skill levels. And so, you know, SpaceX is going to be successful for sure. I want Blue Origin to be successful. Like any rocket entrepreneur, Jeff Bezos is determined to make Blue Origin a serious contender in the space race, aiming to give SpaceX a real challenge. To be honest, he actually has the potential to make it happen. Founded two years before SpaceX, Blue Origin has the billionaire's resources backing the ambitious New Glenn rocket, which rivals SpaceX's Falcon 9 in capability. However, despite these advantages, Blue Origin remains overshadowed by SpaceX, leaving Bezos somewhat of a laughingstock in the space community. And now Jeff's confusion is compounded as Elon Musk's company continues to do what Blue Origin has long struggled to do. Find out everything in today's episode. Scandals aside, Blue Origin's big New Glenn rocket actually will be a challenger to SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. Founded two years before SpaceX, Blue Origin benefits from Jeff Bezos' deep pockets which have provided a substantial R&D budget to develop this ambitious rocket. Standing tall at 320 feet, New Glenn is taller than the 229-foot Falcon 9 and boasts the capability to lift an impressive 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit LEO. In comparison, Falcon 9 can only manage 22.8 tons, while SpaceX's Falcon Heavy tops out at 63.8 tons. One of New Glenn's standout features is its massive 7-meter payload fairing, which offers twice the volume of the standard 5-meter class used by many commercial launch systems. This means it can carry larger payloads, making it a game-changer for deploying multiple satellites at once and giving Blue Origin a competitive edge in the commercial launch market. Its reusable first stage is designed for 25 missions, and powered by seven of Blue Origin's BE-4 engines, the powerful liquid oxygen and liquefied natural gas engines. Each BE-4 engine generates 550,000 IBF thrust at sea level with deep throttle capability. The vehicle's second stage is powered by two BE-3US, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen engines designed to yield over 320,000 IBF of vacuum thrust together. This makes it more powerful than United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur in its reusable form. Bezos has stressed New Glenn is key to his plan of cutting launch costs, enough to move all polluting industries into orbit. Indeed, with $68 million cost per launch, the Blue's orbital vehicle is actually a potential factor on the market today. In short, Technologically, New Glenn is very much a commercial heavy lift launch vehicle to keep an eye on. However, one point that makes it difficult for Blue Origin to surpass SpaceX is speed. Blue Origin is still lagging behind its rival SpaceX, which has consistently reached orbit with multiple successful launches. This year, Blue is determined to break through the Karman line with the long-awaited maiden launch of its new Glenn rocket, after enduring four years of delays. Recently, the company successfully rolled and raised New Glenn vertically at Launch Complex 36, but this is just the beginning. The road ahead remains challenging. The final and crucial static fire test of this massive rocket is still pending regulatory approval. This test, which involves igniting all seven BE-4 engines to full thrust while the rocket remains on the pad, is essential for demonstrating the vehicle's readiness for flight. If all goes according to plan, Blue Origin will integrate the payload, the Blue Ring Pathfinder, onto New Glenn, marking a significant step forward. However, until that static fire test is successfully completed and regulatory hurdles are cleared, the launch remains uncertain. Their executives are set to launch before the end of this year, and according to journalist Christian Davenport, the FAA is likely to grant approval for a December launch. But with the given situation, the December 2024 launch date might be not feasible. As New Glenn is still awaiting its first static fire test, 
SpaceX Starship has once again shaken the aerospace world with another electrifying static fire test in preparation for its Flight 7. On December 9th, Booster 14's 33 Raptor engines fired during this test, producing over 7,000 tons of thrust. The test is successful as usual, and Elon Musk bragged on X, getting ready for Flight 7, signaling the company's confidence in its progress toward the next major launch. With the static fire test successfully completed, Booster 14 has officially wrapped up its individual testing phase. More interestingly, the static fire was just 20 days after Flight 6, manifesting SpaceX's rapid pace, so the January 11, 2025 launch target was well within reach. Fast turnaround times between flights are one of SpaceX's shining points. In late November, the company shattered its record for turnaround time from the landing of a booster to its launch to 13 days and 12 hours, down from 21 days. Even with Thanksgiving just hours away in the United States, SpaceX wasn't ready to call it a month. On Saturday, November 30th, the company launched twice within a span of just over three hours. The missions included another batch of Starlink Internet satellites, along with two StarShield satellites, which are a customized version of Starlink designed specifically for the U.S. Department of Defense. These launches highlight SpaceX's relentless pace and commitment to expanding its satellite network, even during a holiday period. Hard works pay off. The firm is currently achieving an impressive launch rate of one every 2.3 days, humiliating NASA's space shuttle with six months to refurbish. Why did NASA's space shuttle take so long to refurbish between flights? This is partly due to technological disadvantages, which contribute to the lengthy refurbishment period. A typical example is the heat shield. Due to the spacecraft's design with a complex curvature, its heat tiles have various shapes, sizes, and materials. It seems to be inconvenient when shields from a certain area fall. You have to find an exact replacement for that area or take additional time to create new ones. Can't help but mention, they are easily damaged. After each launch, the solid rocket boosters, SRBs, require extensive inspections, cleaning, and repairs to ensure they are flightworthy. This includes addressing any issues from the previous flight and replacing parts with limited lifespans. The refurbishment involves disassembling the SRBs into individual segments for detailed inspection and repair, re-insulating them, and carefully reloading them with solid propellant. Learning from the mistakes of its predecessors, SpaceX has found ways to improve and upgrade the hardware of its rockets, thereby extending their lifespan and ultimately reducing refurbishment times. As a result, during 14 years, SpaceX has launched a total of more than 400 successful missions, whereas over the course of the three decades, NASA's space shuttle flew into orbit. It flew 135 missions. Of course, Blue Origin's New Glenn is no match for SpaceX at this point, given that BO hid its vehicle for so long that people wondered if it was real or just a way for Jeff Bezos to get attention. Following the success of the Falcon 9, SpaceX decided to do the same with its next-generation rocket, Starship. It's quite ambitious for SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell to predict that the company could launch 400 Starships over the next four years. But given the ballooned advancements in Starship development, who knows? The excitement is palpable, especially after the unprecedented feat during Flight 5, where SpaceX successfully caught the Super Heavy booster with mechanical arms showcasing their innovative capabilities. With plans for 25 Starship launches approved for 2025, up from the current limit of five, SpaceX is clearly ramping up operations. This ambitious goal, coupled with the recent successful tests and rapid progress, fuels optimism for a bright future in space exploration. As SpaceX continues to break barriers, the prospect of launching hundreds of Starships may not be as far-fetched as it seems. Additionally, what this giant rocket company has been doing over the past has also strengthened its position in the market. SpaceX has established itself as one of the industry's preeminent rocket launch providers, lofting satellites, cargo, 
and people to space for NASA, the Pentagon, and commercial partners, and is building out a large network of Starlink satellites providing internet service. Musk's businesses have seen an enormous boost since the U.S. election, with investors seeking to capitalize on his deepening ties to President-elect Donald Trump. SpaceX valuation is now jumping to about $350 billion, boosting Musk's own net worth by roughly $50 billion in one fell swoop to $439.2 billion. This success also overshadows Blue Origin's credibility and market position. This is a clear sign of the difference between a company that works itself to exhaustion and a company that works 40 hours a week. Burnout seems to be a terrible work style for many workers, but frankly, nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week. With a standard 40-hour work week, how can Blue Origin catch up to SpaceX? At least Jeff has one thing to brag about, though. It's about its suborbital rocket, New Shepard. Named after Alan Shepard, the first American in space, New Shepard is a reusable rocket system developed by Blue Origin for space tourism. The launch vehicle is designed to be fully reusable, with the capsule returning to Earth via three parachutes and a solid rocket motor. The spacecraft consists of two main components, a reusable booster and a pressurized crew capsule. The capsule can accommodate six passengers, providing each with a window seat to witness breathtaking views of Earth. Among its notable features are the largest windows ever flown in space, offering an unparalleled visual experience for astronauts. New Shepard's 11-minute journey takes passengers beyond the Kármán line. During the flight, passengers experience several minutes of weightlessness before making a controlled descent back to Earth aided by parachutes. The New Shepard system underwent extensive testing, including 16 consecutive successful flight tests and three capsule escape tests before being cleared for crewed missions. The spacecraft is fully autonomous, requiring no pilots on board. With its first flight on 29th April 2015, the vehicle has experienced a total of nine crewed suborbital missions. Its ninth mission, or NS-28, occurred on November 22nd, involving six people, including a pair of repeat customers and a science communicator. NS-28 is not only the ninth crewed flight by New Shepard, but also the third this year. It was also the second flight in one month after the uncrewed NS-27 flight on October 23rd. That mission was the first flight of a new crew capsule and booster that Blue Origin plans to use for future crew flights to provide expanded flight capacity to better meet growing customer demand, the company said at the time. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.